right, guys, so I've made a few changes since the last video, and one of them is the main linkages. I increased the length of the linkages as well as changed the shape of them. And this gives me a better range of motion. So when this is at the bottom, I have more clearance here. So I removed some material here and added it back for strength. So the linkage is going to be just as strong, just have a little more range of motion. The other thing I decided to do was ditch this M5 stack that I was going to use for the user interface. And the reason is I only have five output pins available because they're all taken up by these features that I'm not going to use, like the speaker and the accelerometer and the SD card. So what I'm going to do is instead of using this, I can use my phone because the ESP32 does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And I'm just going to end up using a bare ESP32 and I'll make a little circuit board for it. I'll end up just making another bracket and I'll keep the camera on the bracket and add some shock mounts so that the vibrations from the machine don't translate to the camera. And I'll add a bunch of holes for some switches and buttons. So I was thinking of just adding a mode switch, like this switch has 12 positions, some toggle switches, and some buttons. These potentiometers I could use for a learning mode. So you could have one for each motor and then you could set the position, press a button to set that step. That way you could teach the machine something without actually having to reprogram it. And you might be wondering, well, with 12 modes here, how am I gonna end up with 12 inputs? Because I don't really have that many inputs available. And one way around that is you can make each one of these legs a voltage divider with a different voltage. And the analog to digital converter on the ESP32 will be able to determine which position you're at. So that, that's a little trick you can use to you know, increase the amount of inputs, but only use one pen. The other change I made was to get rid of this mount because I was originally gonna put the camera and the ring light on the effector, which is like the hand of the robot. So I just swapped that out for a much smaller effector. It's called an end effector. And what that's gonna do is gonna give me more range of motion because this, you know, you, you can only pick up in the center. So this being so big kind of reduced the reachable space. So the clip in the beginning, you can see it goes the full range of motion up and down. Then it goes to the extremes of the machine. And you wouldn't want to go, like let's say you're going to pick up a marble or something. If you go straight to the object, you're going to push it. So the second little, I'll, I'll run the machine again, but the first one just goes up and down, then it goes to the extremes, and then it, we're acting as if it were going to the extremes to pick something up because you would go, you would hover above the object, then come down and pick it up and then retract home. So let's do that. The noise will be able to be reduced. It's because of the acceleration. If I improve the acceleration profile, it's the, really the lower speeds that make that loud noise. The in-between is what sounds nice, like the higher pitch sound. So. So I get a lot of questions why I'm using such beefy motors and I kind of explained it in an earlier video if you watch the how to choose the linkage lengths of the Delta robot. And the main reason is when you microstep a separate motor, for example, if you do one eighth microsteps, you're only at 19.5% of the original motor's rate of torque. Now when you one sixteenth microstep like I am here, you're only at 
about 9% of the original rated torque. So these large motors allow me to have a fine resolution and still have plenty of torque left over for fast movements. A few things I still want to add are encoders. That's why I went with a dual shaft motor. So I can still put an optical encoder here. That way, if I do happen to miss steps, which I haven't really missed any steps yet, it'll be able to determine the location. And then also for homing, because right now, if you notice, I don't have any you know, limit switches. So it basically, when it turns on, that is the motor's zero, zero, zero. But it really needs encoders if it wants to be you know, repeatable. That way, you know, if you turn the machine off with encoders, no matter where, like right now the machine's off. So if I move the linkages around, then if the motor, you know, if I turn the machine back on, it would know exactly where it is. So right now, if I ran the same program, it'd end up crashing. So, all right guys, hope you liked the video. If you did, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.